only believers, you know, because there's some people like that. It says, even when we were dead in, in sins, He quickened us together with Christ, by grace you're saved, and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you're saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not works that any man should boast. For we are His workmanship, created Christ Jesus unto good work which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So, that's the King James. Okay, let me give you a little more contemporary translation, like today's English Bible. We're starting uh, by four. Let's say we start. But, but God's mercy is so abundant, and His love for us so great, that while we were spiritually dead, there it is. Dead, for your information, means don't exist. So as far as the world of God, you do not exist. Your non-existence, non-existent. You're born in a in a non-existent place. As, as far as God, as far as knowing Him and being connected to His world, you're just non-existent. So, to say that you had this great choice and will and to choose, you know, I mean, dead dead men don't exercise a whole lot of free will, you know. So it's like, in spiritually speaking, you are not totally, doesn't quite fit. You need something. Um, yes, on the other hand, we do have will, and it's, you can, you can say it's a free will in many respects, but you couldn't quite say it in its absolute perfect sense of the word. Because, it, it, you know, if, if you push it far enough, if you really have a free will, which means free is sovereign. You know, you can do whatever you want. You're in a sovereign situation. And if you're sovereign, and if God is sovereign, one of his line. <laughs> because you cannot have two sovereignties. That in itself is canceled. One canceled the other. And obviously, he is not canceling his sovereignty for you. <laughs> you know? And so, so you have some sort of a pseudo free will or pseudo sovereignty. You kind of are sovereign, where you can do what you want to do, but you kind of not really quite 100%. So go figure. You know, go figure exactly what's going on here. And that's a really, really deep discussion and dilemma, and over which huge denominations are split up. Like there's a famous uh, split between John Wesley and Whitfield. Good, good friends, both massive soul winners, great people of God, and over the issue of sovereign will, they're like, almost like enemies, completely separated and disunited. And, and you know, another, another separation is between those who tend to be more Calvinist, whereas the sovereignty of God is prevalent, and those who tend to be more uh, <coughs> under the influence of Armenian, you know, one is John Calvin, and the other one is whatever Armenian guys. I, I don't know much about him, but uh, they're more uh, influence of the fact that man is got his will, and that everything is up to you. Everything is up to man. God's done his thing. Now it's you, and it's your fault if you don't get saved. Mm -hmm. It's your fault, and it's your responsibility. And it's all based on what you gotta do and what you gotta do. And that there's truth in that. As, as I as I as I evolve and change, you know, from one because I was born at the day, born again that end of the Armenian influence. Is that to, to me? But in time, I shifted, and I've been under the influence of God's grace mm -hmm. and under the influence of God Himself. And you know, that whole revival, my marriage had a lot to do with that. And so, I remember somebody saying to me, "The more I listen to you, the more you sound like a Calvinist." And uh, as opposed to what I used to be before. And I go, well, 
it probably is true that I'm embracing a lot more the of the whole thing about the sovereignty of God that I used to, but I don't want to give up their passion for holiness that came out of my Armenian background because among pure Calvinists, you're not going to hear about holiness. <clears throat> Practically, that's irrelevant. Whether you live holy or don't live holy, you're going to heaven no matter what because extreme Calvinists, says you're chosen that direction and no matter what you do, God's going to make you go there. He'll help you get there. That's it. The other extreme says that almost like if you don't if you do something unholy, you're going to lose your salvation almost. So these are the extremes of theological thoughts, you know, extreme. And kind of in between is whatever. So, so um, I like the passion that I was installed into my being uh, under these Armenian influences where holiness is it. Without holiness, you can't see God. So, so it's vital, vital, vital. But I don't want to get it that way, the way they were getting it, with, which works. Like you have to keep yourself holy, you have to do these holy things and then you get holy. Rather, mm. um, I, I like to be holy, but the way, they're, the way the Calvinists do it, I like it better because it's a gift. It's a gift. It, it gives you holiness as a gift. So, but if you're raised that way with them, you're not going to even have desire for it because that's a gift. You want to give it to me? Fine. If not, I'm fine too because I'm going to have. I'm not going to go to hell no matter what I do. So I like the passion these other guys have about holiness, but I like to get it the way these other guys are getting it. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. So if you desire it, mm -hmm. God will give it to you, and that's how I, it kind of works for me. So I kind of like to do best best of mm -hmm. both worlds. So I don't know about you, but you know what you want to do. What do you need? Oh, I just. <laughs> no, there's interesting stuff in um, well, this one verse I just saw in Corinthians. It's very interesting how um, I can do anything I want to if Christ has not said no, but some of these things aren't good for me. Like in Corinthians, there's a lot. First yeah. Corinthians 6. Yeah. I mean, if you You're given uh, an open. But if that's not the way you need to quite look at it, you have to read a lot of translation on that one, mm -hmm. because there are several translations who, who don't say you have to do whatever I want to do. Yeah. It's not quite that way. I, I, I've, I've mm -hmm. read the passages in several places. In fact, if you, if you uh, remind me, I'll, I'll ask Winnie, because she remembers, she, she's got 108 translations. Oh, she got another one. Yeah, oh, yeah. just recently. She was, she had yeah, seven. Now it's eight, and eight, she says it might be even more, George. Don't don't quote her on seven because I think it's more. But anyway, somebody just gave him one. But remind me after the class, I'll call Winnie to prepare that because there are several translations to dis discuss that, and it's not what you, okay. not what it kind of like sounds like. Anyways, here's what I wanna I wanna go into. It says so, so, so. While we were spiritually dead in our disobedience, he brought he brought us to life with Christ. Hello. Mm -hmm. Who brought us to life while we were spiritually unexistent? He brought us. So that's by his will, by his exertion, by his power. That's that's the important aspect. Let's keep reading. It is by God's grace. You know what grace means? Anybody a strong concordance here? Strong? Um, okay, when you look at it later, uh, look at the word grace, check the number, and then go back to the definition. And one of the definitions is divine influence. Grace means divine influence on the heart of man and its reflection in the life. You know, beside being a gift, and beside being kindness and, uh, you know, other, uh, other things, Charis charisma, whatever, how that you say that word uh, in Greek, but it means divine influence. So in this case, it fits here to to see the the the, the uh, definition because it is God's grace, God's divine influence. By His divine influence, that you have been saved. By His divine influence, that you have been saved. 
Wait a minute, I have a choice here. I know, I know.